UNC's Children's Hospital represents many who fight life and death battles. One group shows the patient's adversity in photo form. Mark Alexic has that story. Margot Pinkerton and Arnie Zan are professional photographers. They've shot for National Geographic, Vogue, and Time magazines. But this photo shoot presents unique challenges. Our talent is secondary to the kids. The kids are the stars. We're trying to make them their day special. And what a special day it is. Children attending this photo shoot have faced life-threatening illnesses. Now they'll have pictures documenting their survival. It's catching their winsome smiles. It's seeing the courage that these kids go through, because some of them have some pretty serious operations they've been through. Like Tyson Smith. He was still in diapers when doctors performed surgery on his heart. They found out the situation was very serious, and so through tests they determined that it could have been a virus attack his heart and cause his heart to enlarge. Tyson is recovering well. So well, he and his father got free professional portraits of themselves thanks to flashes of hope. This has meant a lot to me. I didn't realize how much it would um, it would give to my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hospital gave Tyson a new lease on life. Tyson gave Michael, Margo, and Arnie a new look at life. The father of Tyson earlier was saying, you have no, you really do not appreciate life until you go through something like that. So in a way, we're celebrating life. A celebration of life, one picture at a time. In Chapel Hill, I'm Mark Olexic, Carolina Week. Hospitals across the country have adopted their own chapters of Flashes of Hope. The chapter at UNC's Children's Hospital is the first one in North Carolina. A recent study shows that popping the pill might prevent more than just pregnancy. The British Medical Journal reports that taking birth control pills reduces the risk of developing any type of cancer by 12 percent, but only if you take them for a short period of time. Women who took the pill for more than eight years saw a 22 percent increase in their risk of cancer. 300 million women worldwide have used the birth control pill since its creation in 1961. The university is starting a new program to get more women interested in science. It's not unusual to see people working with beakers and test tubes in a lab. What is unusual is seeing women doing the experiments. Not that many women study science, and only 23% of UNC women faculty members are in the sciences. That's why Carolina is introducing a new program called Working on Women in Science to recruit more women to labs like this one. The university is providing more than $110,000 for the experimental program. Are you tired of walking to class every day? Some UNC students don't have to. For the first time, the university is offering some beginner language classes in hybrid form. Instead of having to walk to class four days a week, students in hybrid introductory Spanish meet with a professor just one day a week. Virtual classes meet three times a week and include lectures, Buenos dias, clase. written homework, and recorded pronunciation exercises. A student-led session once a week gives participants a chance to work on conversation. Finally, you can see and hear the first people of North Carolina on campus. UNC's American Indian Center held its first open house at Abernathy Hall on Friday. The event featured, nav featured nader native drumming and the Carolina Indian Circle singing group, Unheard Voices. The center will facilitate research, events, and programs related to American Indians. Assistant Director Brandy Brooks says the center will make Native issues a permanent part of the university. It's an excellent resource. It's actually the first of its kind in the southeast. So that kind of establishes the university as truly the uh, university for the people and the first people of North Carolina and in the southeast, the first Americans. There are only about 200 Native American students at UNC, but administrators hope to increase enrollment in the future. Last week we told you about our cuddly friend Bear, and we're pleased to tell you he found a new home a few days ago. Now let's introduce you to this week's featured pet. Meet Peggy Sue, a five-year-old red tick hound who's best known at the shelter as a busy bee. She's a playful companion, and like most hounds, she's always on a mission. Okay, she came to the shelter as a stray, and now she's looking for a friendly and affectionate family to call her own. 
For more information about how you can adopt Peggy Sue or any of the other animals at the shelter, go to our website, carolinaweek.org. And now we're joined by weathercaster Mallory Nichols. Hey. Hi Mallory, it's getting a lot cooler out there. I was packing my things for flag football and I had to pack a long sleeve shirt and tights. Well, I don't know about you or everybody else, but I'm definitely loving the cooler temperatures. Beautiful conditions have definitely come to Chapel Hill. These girls decided to take advantage by hula hooping outside. Will these awesome conditions last through the week? Fall is in the air.